I'm making, there we go, we're a little recording, so we can send that all out to you uh, tomorrow or the next day. Um, so I'm making a garden focaccia, which is a bit of a fun. Um, I'm no expert, so I'm hoping my garden design skills don't embarrass me today. So quiet giggles are fine, but no rolling around on the floor, if that's okay, when I do my pre presentation at the end. Um, I've made this focaccia, you know, the regular focaccia out of cookie dough for many years. I always thought it was such a great recipe um, until one day I had some spare buttermilk, which I didn't want to waste. So I thought I would try focaccia using the buttermilk bread recipe. And I can't tell you what a game changer that is. It's totally amazing with the, butter, with the buttermilk um, and how awesome to be able to make your own breads you know, save a truckload compared to, you know, buying from Baker's Delight. Uh, plus there's no preservatives or any other additives. Um, so a bit of a win-win. Um, so with this recipe, of course, you can make your own buttermilk. Um, so making butter from, you know, just pure cream takes about two minutes and the buttermilk is a byproduct of uh, making butter. And if you don't want to use the buttermilk on that day, you can freeze it. It, it freezes really well. Um, but if it's more convenient, then you can always buy just the 600 ml containers from the supermarket. So, um, you know, if bread's something that you're not super familiar with, uh, why not have a cooking experience with your consultant? You can make a bread product, whether it's a pizza or, um, you know, whatever you like, get some ideas going. Um, and of course, you get to pick up host rewards as well. And one of them is um, the Thermomat, which I'm going to show you uh, shortly. So what I'll do is I'm just going to take you over to my other screen. Um, it literally is just a case of following along with this recipe. They're really, you know, nothing onerous. Um, I've pre-made the dough. You're on mute tonight. Oh, I don't know how that happened. It just did it all by itself. Can you hear me now? Yes, 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 oh, continue now. Like that. that was right. my fault, sorry. Um, so, yeah, the, the dough can be slightly wet. So sprinkle a little bit of flour onto the thermo mat before you prove it, or the bowl, if you're just using a bowl. Uh, lightly flour your hands as well, um, because it can be quite a sticky dough when you, you, you've got to manage it. Um, if you're trying to prove a dough um, on a colder day, you can use boiling water in your thermo server. And generally, I just pop a um, pop some boiling water in there, put a plate on the top, and I just sit my um, thermo mat on there. So um, the other thing is you want to make sure you have a nice hot oven to put the focaccia into. I did a little bit of a trial run today, and of course, I had my oven on. Um, grill fan for some reason so don't do that just just use the normal uh, baking setting um, so I've preheated my oven um, once the dough has finished proving I've knocked it down and then I've shaped it into my tray but I will just go to my other camera now and just quickly run you through the recipe so we just press start cooking and Maria are you able to um, highlight my other screen for me is that working uh, yet yeah, the other one is also spotlit. So do you want both of them on spotlight, yeah, both you okay. and the machine? I'm going to run through this really quickly. So 180 grams of buttermilk into the bowl, 200 grams of water, two teaspoons of dried yeast. So, you know, you can buy that in the uh, containers in the supermarket. You just keep it in the fridge. You can also get it in the sachets if you prefer to do that. Pop our measuring cup in. We cook that for or warm that for three minutes on 37 degrees. That's going to activate the yeast. And then we press next. Um, it asks me to grease a, a deep sided tin. So this recipe is actually for the bread, uh, buttermilk bread, but I'm turning it into a focaccia. Um, so 500 grams of baker's flour. And I think. Um, you know, we need to use baker's flour when we're, when we're doing bread products or pizza doughs. It has a higher uh, gluten and protein content, so it makes it a little bit more robust and, you know, kind of carry that uh, extra weight rather than 
you know, using cake flowers and stuff like that. So readily available at any of the supermarkets. Um, a teaspoon of salt, pop my lid on. Now, what it does is it's just going to mix those ingredients for six seconds because there's quite a lot in the bowl. Um, and then keep the measuring cup inserted. Then the TM6 pops itself into the kneading function and we knead that dough for um, three minutes. So really careful, um, you know, with a pizza dough, I think it's only 400 grams of flour. With the uh, pull aparts and, um, you know, these larger loaves of bread, it is quite a big ball of dough bouncing around in your machine. So really careful just to make sure that you stay there with it so it doesn't, you know, kind of wiggle its way to the end of the bench. Um, so what I did was I used my thermo mat. So I took it out of the um, bowl. And how you can do that, just give you a quick little tip, turn your bowl upside down and just use that, um, the blade spinner there. I just turn it upside down and just keep spinning it and you'll kind of feel the big weight of the, the main ball of dough drop down to the mat. Um, and then you can just, as I said, put some flour on your fingers first and just kind of get that last little bit out of there. And of course, if you've got a TM6, um, what I did was popped in 500 mils of water and popped it onto the uh, dough pre-clean function. Absolutely amazing, does the perfect job. So transfer the dough onto a mat, wrap it up, uh, leave it to prove in place for 30 minutes, preheat my oven. Then I got the dough and I popped it onto my bench, knocked it down. So just kind of take all the air out of it. And then I've shaped it. So um, Anne-Marie, we can just go back to um, me now. We don't need to have the other screen happening. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna really quickly take you through the decoration part of it now. So what you could do, if you were just making a normal focaccia, just literally dig your fingers in, just randomly around, and then you could sprinkle, you know, rosemary, garlic, salt, pepper, you know, caramelized onions, whatever you like to pop on there. Um, and then you could bake that in the oven. But so what I'm gonna do, and I do like to um, drizzle some olive oil on the top of the dough. And then I'm just really quickly just gonna brush that around so I don't get greasy fingers. So this is where the fun happens. So, you know, grab your kids and um, have a little bit of a play. You can just use whatever ingredients uh, you've got in your pantry, uh, in, in your, you know, your veggie box or whatever. So I'm literally just going to kind of start popping these ingredients in into try and make it something look quite pretty. We'll see how we go. I'm not, um, can't say I'm any kind of an artist whatsoever. But, you know, it's all about having a little bit of fun and putting some flavours in that, that you like. Um, I mean, obviously, that's, that's the big one. Um, so, yeah, just, just have a little bit of a play around and use whatever, whatever suits you and your family. So I'll just pop these around here. So if you have a look on uh, Pinterest or, um, you know, just Google garden focaccias on um, YouTube or anything like that, you'll find lots of, you know, pretty pictures. Some people are just so amazing. They're so creative and clever. As I say, I'm just, just a mum cooking for the kids, husband, trying to keep everybody happy and so I'm just going to pop these over here. As I say, just have a little bit of a fun with it. We've got a little bit of a sun thing happening over here. I don't know how that's going to work. It's I'm running out of room already. But um, just pop those on there. So, yeah, as I say, there's all sorts of different focaccias that you can do. So using the high heat function on the TM6, you can caramelize some onions um, and you can pop those on the top too, if you like. So I'm just squeezing in some fresh rosemary. So just give it a little bit of a push into the dough. So it's not just sitting literally just on the top. You wanna to kind of have it embedded in it a little bit. Back down a tiny bit. And 
Okay, now I was trying to put a sun over here or something. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to call this, but I don't, I think we might run out of room actually. But we'll see how we go. As I say, just having a little bit of fun, have a go, pop some things on. Basil's always an amazing one to, um, to use on uh, focaccias. Tomato, I do love tomato. Um, That's so, yeah. amazing, Janine. Very um, creative. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very clunky, I must say. It's not, <laughs> I can't say that this is my forte whatsoever, but I thought, why not, um, you know, have a bit of a play and do something different this afternoon and I'll even inspire. Lots of lovely comments in the chat. Everybody's impressed with your creativity. So um, that's beautiful. We will look forward to seeing that when it comes out of the oven. Okay. Oh, and I'm just sprinkling a tiny bit of rosemary, garlic, salt and pepper over the top, just a little bit of seasoning. And I might just uh, pop a little bit more salt as well. But, yes, you'll see me at the end. So enjoy and I'll catch you very soon. Beautiful. Lovely. All right. Thank you. And uh, Anne-Marie, if you wouldn't mind spotlighting me back to Kirsty again. I am going to make the frozen pineapple cream for us now. Um, how are you going there, Anne-Marie? I know it can be hard to find me uh, in the participant list. Okay, we've got my Thermomix grape and me. Excellent. All right, I'm going to go on gallery view because I don't need to see myself in very large. All right, so I'm going to do the frozen pineapple cream. So on these beautiful warm days that we're starting to get, it's really nice to have a bit of a palate cleanser. Um, works great for afternoon tea, all sorts of, all you know, as a, a really simple dessert as well. So I'm going to show you this recipe. I've already got it in my meal plan for the week. So I just click on that to bring up the recipe and then start cooking. Now, here's a tip for you. If you forgot to take your lid off before you click on start cooking, don't forget to tear your scales. So 50 grams of raw sugar. And then the next step is to also add some um, mint leaves. So I've got all of that in there together. I'm just going to chuck that in together. And we're going to mill that. And that gives us beautiful minty <laughs> I wish you could smell this, but alas, you cannot. You just have to take my word for it, though, that it smells amazing. So now we've got really fine sugar with the little bits of mint all through there. That's just going to take our pineapple flavour to the next level. If you didn't know, pineapple and mint go really well together, thinking of some pretty famous cocktails there. All right, now 600 grams of frozen pineapple. So I just slight, uh, diced this up last night and froze it in my beautiful white thermo server, if you don't have one of these, also on our host reward list. Now, a little tip for you, when you freeze your pineapple, I think you can actually buy bags pre-frozen, but if you're freezing fresh, pop it in a plastic bag so that then you can kind of break it up. I actually did it in a plastic container and then it stuck to the bottom of the container. We had a little mild panic and had to switch our, um, our run sheet around so that my pineapple could slightly thaw, but it's all good on the nuts. 60 grams of coconut milk. And in fact, I'm using coconut cream because that was just what I had. And I figured all the more coconutty, absolutely delicious. So that's going in there as well. And two egg whites. So if you're used to making fruity dream, normally it's just the one egg white, we're using two, which is going to give it even more sort of creamy, fluffy texture. Now, mixing with the aid of the spatula. So if you're new to the Thermomix, this little guard makes sure that we're not going too deep and clipping the blades. So we're going to pop that in through the hole in the roof lid. You know what I mean? And we're going to be mixing that for 40 seconds. Now, Zoom is probably going to mute me. So I could tap dance if you like, but you're not going to hear me. I'll have a little chat. So when I've um, made this recipe, I think you could throw a little bit of... Um, Malibu in there or any any white rum and and you could close your eyes and we can all pretend that we're sitting on the beach in Hawaii having a beautiful um, cocktail because it's it's not happening for us at the moment. But um, yeah, I, I 
absolutely love this recipe. It's such a great one for, you know, little kids, but also for adults as a, as a great dessert. Um, you know, those really hot days, instead of having a slushy, have a bit of pineapple cream. Thank you, Janine, for filling in there. <laughs> it's a great thing that Zoom does, but it can also be a little bit annoying. So if you're making sorbets, fruity dreams, things like that, and while you're chopping all of that frozen ice or fruit and it starts to make this really high-pitched squealing noise, you have not broken your thermomix. It just means that the blades aren't finding anything to connect with. It just means that you need to really keep moving everything around with the spatula. So you can see there how that's all chopped up beautifully, nice and starting to get nice and creamy. So I'm just going to give that a scrape around, make sure that there's no big lumps of pineapple left. And I'm finding one or two, which is as I would expect, because I've still got a few seconds left on that timer. But I did just want to show you what that's looking like. So we'll just give that the last couple of seconds there. Smells absolutely amazing. Pineapples are so good at the moment. They are huge and they're really, really sweet. So it just says to scrape it down. And then we're just going to give that a few more seconds. Although I'm thinking we probably don't need the full 20 seconds. It's looking pretty good in there. I think we're about done. All right, so next we're inserting our butterfly whisk. So this is what you use when you're whipping and aerating. Karen's going to talk to you about whipping cream in a minute. The butterfly is what you use for whipping cream. If you're not confident with the butterfly, how cool is this? The TM6 has little videos that pop up on the screen that give you a little video tutorial. So I have used my butterfly a few times before, so I'm not going to play the video, but I'm just going to pop that in there, just finding that little knob in the centre of the blades. Pop the butterfly in. Now here's my little tip for you. Gently hold the top of the butterfly with your fingers as you, so ignore it where it says to put the measuring cup on just for the first couple of seconds. Just make a little TP with your fingers and just around that ball on the top of the butterfly for the first couple of seconds as you turn it on. Because then if you didn't quite position it properly and it starts to fall off and the blades start here, you'll feel it go and you can quickly stop the thermomix mix before it gets chopped up. One little thing I do, Kirsty, with this recipe is I actually grab a lump of the ice cream and throw it on the kind of the butterfly, each arm of the butterfly. That gives it a little bit of weight as well. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that, Janine, but thank you for filling in there. <laughs> okay, this is absolutely, nope, you wouldn't like it. It's a good thing I can't share it. I'm going to have to eat it all myself. <laughs> Smells absolutely amazing. So that has just fluffed up beautifully. You've got the lovely flavour from the coconut cream, the sweetness from the pineapple, that, you know, beautiful bit of mint as well. So it says to divide it between serving bowls. I'm going to pop it back into my white thermo server and hopefully by the time my family come home, they probably got a bit wet out there today, um, they can then enjoy this. So we are now going across to, who have we got next? Karen with the showstopper dish. Thank you, Karen. That's right. I'll just give Anne-Marie a second to find me. There we go. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to my kitchen. I have been asked today to present the um, deliciously decadent sous vide strawberries with white chocolate mousse. Um, it really is the most delicious dessert, um, a firm favorite in our family. Um, and just hold on one second. My family just arrived home, <laughs> loudly. Um, so for the um, recipe that I'm, I'm going to show you today, I'm actually going to skip and start at step four. Um, I've prepared some of the earlier steps, which I'll talk through with you in a second. But the first thing I'd like to show you is a very handy tip. 
um, at, um, in order to, to start at step four, you can actually go and find your recipe um, on the screen. And then instead of clicking on start cooking, you scroll down a bit until you see step four in the recipe. Um, and you just click on that and it'll take you straight to the start of step four. Um, right, now my first step here is um, I'm, I'm going to be melting the white chocolate. Um, but the step before this was to whip cream. And then after whipping of the cream, it asked me to clean my bowl thoroughly and dry it um, to then step it, go onto the chocolate step. Um, but what we often find is that you, you think that you've dried your bowl, and I'm gonna show you. My bowl definitely does look dry if you have a look inside. Um, but this is just a nifty little tip just to make sure because when you're melting and mixing chocolate, um, if there are any droplets of water inside, um, it will clump up your chocolate. So there'll be little lumpy bits. and We don't want that. Um, a lot of people say, but there are lumps in my chocolate. Why didn't it melt nicely? Um, and it's usually because there is water left on your blades. Um, so all you need to do is um, you pop out of your recipe um, and whiz the blades literally for three or four seconds on high speed. Um, and then I'll show you miraculous water droplets. Right, now, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, especially with the glare, but there are water droplets all around the side of the bowl. Can anybody see that? I'm not sure if it's clear enough, but they are actually. Um, water droplets that have spun out. So you just take some paper towel or a dry dishcloth and wipe that off. And that guarantees that your bowl is nice and dry for the start of the chocolate. So, can I get that out? Okay. And then to go back to the recipe, you just press the little green book, the recipe book, and it'll take you back to the start of where you were in the recipe. So now it's asking for 100 grams of white chocolate. Um, it does ask you to use some good chocolate. So I've used Lindt, or the Lindor, which actually comes broken up in little blocks, which is quite handy, and it's exactly 100 grams. Now we're just going to chop up this, grate this chocolate very quickly for five seconds. Okay. <laughs> Shane, Karen, you've got one square of chocolate that you'll just have to eat. Did you see that? I didn't even notice I left that in the bowl. It'll be <laughs> later, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, the next step is just to scrape down the sides of the mixing bowl because we're going to melt this chocolate and um, it all needs to be at the bottom in order to melt nicely and mix with the blade. So I'm just going to scrape it down a bit. There we go. And pop that on for one and a half minutes. Um, so what I'll talk to you about now very quickly while this is the chocolate's melting um, is the um, cream that I whipped earlier. Um, as Kirsty mentioned, I, um, you use the butterfly whisk. Um, but what's important to note with, when whipping cream is that um, your Thermomix is not going to set a time for that step uh, because depending on how fresh your cream is um, or depending on what cream you bought, um, it, it, the time is going to vary to whip it um, and get it to the right consistency. So what I tend to do is I leave the lid in, um, the measuring cup in for um, until I can hear the swishing sound sort of start coming to an end. While you can hear the liquid swishing around, you, you sort of know that it's still pretty liquid. As soon as that sound, that noise stops, um, you'll find it'll firm up very quickly. And as soon as the cream starts sticking to the outside of the bowl, that's pretty much when you, you stop. Just make sure you don't go too over or it um, very quickly turns to butter. So um, that was a step that I did just before the chocolate. And I just need to grab it out of the fridge very quickly. So 
Um, right. Also, before this finishes, um, the very first step is to make the biscuit base um, for your white chocolate um, mousse to sit on top of. Um, this biscuit base is very quick and easy to make. It is literally just some digestive biscuits, some brown sugar, and some melted butter. Um, and it just whizzes around. And then um, you have enough for six little portions um, in, in whichever glasses you might have um, and want to serve them in. So I have to did do that a little bit earlier. Okay. The chocolate hasn't quite melted enough. I'm going to give it a little bit, a little bit of extra time just to melt properly. Um, it won't take long, but I do want it to be melted. So I'm just going to go back a step. No, I've gone too far. And let's just lift that on. Let's just give that another 30 seconds or so, and then we can move on. Yeah. That's looking a bit better. It does actually tell you at the bottom here, it says melting until smooth, prolonged time if necessary. So there is a very good chance that you might need to add a little bit of time to get that beautiful, smooth, all totally melted consistency. Okay. There we go. Perfect. And look at that. It's creamy. Maybe I should stick further away. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Beautiful creamy white chocolate. Um, the next step is to add cream cheese, softened cream cheese. And a teaspoon of van vanilla bean paste. And then we add one quarter of the reserved whipped cream that I whipped a little earlier. And mix that all together. So as you can see, it's not, it's maybe a little bit deceptive saying that it's a white chocolate mousse. Um, it's, it's almost more like a cheesecake. And because of the cream and the cream, uh, the cream cheese mixing in with the white chocolate, it's actually not terribly rich. Um, I think a lot of people expect it to be like white chocolate and, and white chocolate does, a lot of people find that just over sweet. Um, but because of mixing in with the cream and, um, and the cheese, it actually ends up being more like a cheesecake. It is really, really delicious. down the base and the sides of the bowl. That's just to make sure that everything has, has mixed nicely together. And another five seconds. Okay, we're now going to transfer this and I'm going to dip my screen down so that you can see. Um, we're going to transfer this mixture into the rest of the whipping cream and mix it all together. We're just gonna very fold it all in with the spatula. I don't want to leave too much around the blades. There we go. 
and we just fold this nicely together. So folding it in with the rest of this cream does just give it that beautiful light and fluffy um, texture. Um, and as I said before, it also helps to make it not terribly sweet. So we mix that all together. And once it's all mixed beautifully, we're going to spoon it on into our little dishes that I've prepared with the crushed biscuit base. I think that'll do. So you literally just take your take your glass with the biscuits and dollop a nice healthy dollop of the cream cheese on top. Sort of about about two thirds of your glass because the strawberries are going to go on top. So this will just get put in the fridge for about an hour just to chill and firm up. Um, and then we have the strawberries to add on top. So that brings me to the next step. And our next step is the sous vide strawberries. I'll continue to do those other ones a bit later. Um, the strawberries, um, you use two bags of 200 grams, which roughly um, is roughly a punnet a bag. Um, you wash and um, uh, cut the strawberries in half, place them into the bags with um, a tablespoon of orange juice, um, two teaspoons of maple syrup, and some um, basil if you'd like, but the basil is optional. Um, and then you vacuum seal these bags. Now we've got in the mix shop, we've got a vacuum sealer available. It comes with um, five or 10 bags, um, but you can buy more bags. Um, but if you don't have, and I don't have a vacuum sealer, you can actually just, um, there is a nifty little stick that I'll show you. If you just get a bowl or pot of um, water um, and place your bag of strawberries, which will be open at the top, so it's actually not sealed yet. If you just submerge your bag of strawberries in the water, um, just obviously making sure that the top doesn't go underwater, you don't want water to uh, pour into your bag. Um, and it, it just forces the air out of the bag and then you can seal it up. And that pretty much does the same job as a vacuum sealer. So you can still do this um, without a vacuum sealer. And there you go. So that's all done. Now, um, this one I've actually replaced. I've made one bag with orange juice for my children. Um, and I've made a bag, instead of the orange juice, I've actually replaced that with, um, you can use any orange liqueur. I've used um, Contro. And um, I, oh, I do that? That's not going to work very well. Um, so that one's going to be for me and my husband. Um, I'm just going to do that again. I didn't seal the bag properly. That was a bit silly. Let's try that again. Um, some people also just um, for peace of mind like to double bag um, just to make sure that while it's cooking no water slips inside. I have honestly I've, I've never double bagged and I've never had an issue. Touch wood. Let's hope that that doesn't start today. Um, but I, I don't tend to need a double bag. We've used we've done steak, we've done scrambled eggs and I've never ever had an issue. Um, I just buy the um, BPA free, uh, free uh, sandwich bags um, from Woolies um, and they work perfectly. So, um, right, we've got our bags all ready and our next step, oops, um, mixing bowl. Luckily, I've got a second mixing bowl which I'm going to use. Um, Okay, I've done all these steps. Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up. Okay, um, I've already inserted the blade cover, but as you can see here, um, and as or maybe you can't see my screen, but there's a nifty little video that does show you how to insert the blade cover if needed. So um, don't worry too much. It really does fit in super easily. Um, you can't really go wrong. Um, so you insert the blade cover. If you don't have a blade cover, you can actually sous vide in the simmering basket. So don't worry if you don't have one. It's still works perfectly. And these two bags of strawberries can fit into your simmering basket. 
Okay, now I'm going to pop these into the bowl um, and then we're going to pour water. Um, we need the bags in the bowl so that we can measure the level of the water that we need. So the water needs to go up to the two litre mark. Now, ordinarily, you might have been able to see the steam coming off my water. Ordinarily, I would put cold water in the bowl. Um, just to save us a bit of time, I have used, um, I boiled some water just to get the temperature up a bit because our first step in sous vide is to, um, to heat the water temperature, to get the temperature to the right um, setting in order to sous vide the food. Um, so we, we put the bags in first just to get to the right level of water in the bowl. Then we remove them. and set them aside. We add 30 grams of lemon juice, um, and that's just because of the prolonged cooking time with the water. Um, they suggest that you add lemon juice just to prevent any rusting that might happen to your bowl, which um, I'm sure is, is highly unlikely, but it's just preventative, I suppose, if you're doing a lot of sous vide, you need it. Um, and then we're going to place the lid um, measuring cup in and this is the first step to heat the um, temp to get the temperature right which is 68 degrees um, and once it reaches the correct temperature I can then insert the bags of strawberries and get the cooking underway so I'm going to do that step I'm going to leave you now and move on to the next presenter and um, and I'll be back in a little bit to show you how they turn out thank you Cara that was amazing I think everybody's very jealous and wishing that they are in your household and get to eat those later. Yes, I'll dessert. My children are very excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and um, oh, sorry, get, get my finger very large there while I change to gallery view, so I'm not looking just at myself. Um, I actually made that earlier in the week, the sous vide strawberries um, with the white chocolate mousse. It was my daughter's birthday, and so that was her special birthday dessert request. No cake this year sign of growing up. All right, so now to our main dish, one of our main dishes, the Moroccan lamb burgers with harissa yogurt dressing. So let's just jump straight in. Place a mixing bowl onto the mixing bowl lid. Place a bowl onto the mixing bowl lid. This is just weighing and then soaking in boiling water this burgal wheat. Now it's a cracked wheat. I found it at Source. You can also get it in Harris Farm. So I've just pre-weighed that, soaked it with some boiling water and then drained it. And we're just gonna add that into the burgers. Now, if you couldn't be bothered, you could probably just use the same weight of breadcrumbs. It's just as a binding agent in your burger. So don't stress if you can't find it. Okay, so I've set that aside. Next step is our, um, whoop, there we go, no, wrong way. Our lemon zest, which I've just done uh, with a vegetable peeler. Four sprigs of fresh mint, and some parsley. So all of that is going in together. And we're just gonna give that a quick chop. Three seconds. And this is gonna give us a nice beautiful flavor through these burgers. Now, mint is growing crazy at the moment as is parsley. So there's our chopped herbs. Not sure if the light's working quite the right angle there. It does say to set aside. I'm looking at that going, you know what? I prefer mine a little bit finer. So I'm gonna use the back arrow and just repeat that step, just to get finer pieces. Which is the nice thing about cooking from scratch because you can tweak the recipe as you go. So I'm now gonna set that aside and we'll add that back in to our burger mixture a little bit later. It smells absolutely amazing. I got all the right, really nice smelling dishes tonight, today, tonight, this afternoon. What time are we? All right, so set that aside for later. Two echelots. Now, if you haven't bought echelots before, this is what you're looking for. They're kind of a cross between the color of an onion and a little bit bigger, quite a, quite a bit bigger than a clove of garlic. Okay, good thing I didn't need that one. I've got two here that I have already peeled. 
plus two cloves of garlic. So I'm going to pop those in together. Slippery little suckers. It's over there now. And 20 grams of olive oil. Just weigh that in. Who loves the fact that the, the scales just pop up? Less washing up. Just do it all in the one bowl, which can then go in the dishwasher, of course. Right, five seconds of chopping those together. And now I'm going to scrape it down and saute it. Actually, it doesn't tell me to scrape it down, but I'm going to because I can hear that it all moved out to the edges. I will just show you that for those who haven't seen chopping onions and garlic and things before. Is that a better camera angle? Yeah, there we go, look at that. And there's a, just a little bit of the lemon and the parsley and, ooh, that's it. oh, nasty, my eyes. Um, think of those, the lemon and the herbs in there as well. Oh, right, okay, so while that is sorting, with this recipe, oh, gee. <laughs> Is anybody else really sensitive to onions? So glad I don't have to try and chop them by hand anymore. I would take off the end of my fingers. Love that the Thermomix can do that for me. Just don't put your head over the top when you take the lid off. Um, the Harissa yogurt dressing. I have pre-made that, so I just want to talk you through um, that part of the recipe. And yes, I'm very moved by the experience. That's right, Anne-Marie. <laughs> oh, it's just... So emotional cooking. Um, so I've actually just made a half batch of this yogurt dressing for the burgers um, because it is a little bit spicy and I wasn't sure that all of the family would eat it. So I've just done a half batch. So this is just a bit of lemon juice, some yogurt, and of course, you know, if you have a thermal mix, you can be making your own yogurt, which is a huge cost saving. It costs about $1.20 a litre to make yogurt instead of five, six, seven, ten dollars $10 a litre to buy. Um, so lemon juice, yogurt, some more of those beautiful herbs, some mint and parsley, um, and then you want the uh, harissa. Now, harissa you can buy, again, in places like specialty delis, Harris Farm. It's basically a chilli paste with a few spices thrown in. So it's a Moroccan um, yeah, chilli paste sort of thing. There is also a recipe for harissa. That's right. Thank you, Christine. For there's a recipe for harissa on cookie dough, so I had a look at that. It's just you know red chilies and garlic, and as I said, some of those beautiful Moroccan spices, cumin and coriander, and, and those sorts of things. At a pinch, if you didn't have the ingredients to make the harissa and you couldn't find it to buy, you could probably use some some other sort of chili paste, maybe like a sriracha or something like that. So I have pre-made that, and look, I found a beautiful looking Moroccan bowl. Might be better over here. Um, actually, it's Tunisian. Um, but similar, you know, same region of the world. So we've got our dressing. Um, yes, we will include the recipe in an email to everybody after the class. Okay, now we are supposed to set, oh, you see all that steam coming out from sauteing the onions and garlic. Um, we're supposed to set that aside to cool for a couple of minutes. We don't have the time today, so I'm just going to move straight on. Um, so it says to add in the lamb mince. I'm actually going to add this soaked wheat first, just straight next to the, the hot stuff. I'm sure that this will still work just fine without letting it cool. In here, I've got some of those beautiful spices, cumin, coriander, some salt and pepper. All of that goes in together. It is all in the recipe here. Let me just tab through. Ground cumin, coriander, salt, pepper. And now I'll pop in the lamb mitts. So 500 grams of lamb mitts. I've just kind of broken it up into chunks a little bit. And the reserved wheat, which we drained. Yes. Okay. And the herb mixture. Don't forget our beautiful lemon and herb mixture. That goes in as well. These burgers, I had to do a trial one of these last weekend and the family all said they were just top notch. Better than the fish and chip shop, which wouldn't be hard, but there we go. All right, so we're going to mix this together. You might notice if you're new to the Thermomix um, that we now have a little green reverse arrow. We're stirring rather than, you know, blitzing or, or chopping this. So 10 seconds on the clock. doesn't say to do this, but I am going to keep the... I'm going to pop my spatula in just to sort of make sure that all gets combined. Beautiful. Okay. Now, 
you want to form your burgers and it does actually give you some guideline here on how many portions six portions of approximately 125 grams each so i want to show you a little trick for how you can um, portion those out oh, a little bit of lemon and herb there that fell out of the bowl so i actually have one of these burger presses these are fantastic you can get them from most kitchen stores i have made the suggestion that we should get them in mix shop um, so keep an eye out you never know I like to line it with a bit of baking paper so that I'm not having to wash this. So you could put, you can do two at a time in this one or you can buy single ones. So I am going to, let me show you how to get your 125 grams. So you want to activate your scales. So we're currently on zero and now I'm just going to keep taking mixture out until it says minus 125 grams. How easy is that? And then there's no fights about who got a fatter burger than somebody else. After carefully lining one side of it, I then managed to, there we go. Oh, 123, oh, there'll be fine. Anyway, so then you just spread that out in there, pop your other piece of paper on top before you press it down. So ordinarily I would do two at a time, but, um, in the interest of saving time. So then, can't see it there, but you then you just pop your press on top. I will put it on the bench. And then you just squeeze it together, which gives you a lovely um, compressed burger so that it doesn't fall apart then when you put it on the barbecue or in the fry pan or however it is that you're going to cook it. So then, look at that, just like I bought one. Beautiful, nicely compressed, and um, it keeps its shape. So. I'm going to just launch a little video now because the next step in this recipe, so this is a recipe from our barbecue cookbook and it utilises the Meter Plus, which happens to be in our value bundle this month. Um, so this uh, is a digital thermometer and the recipe says that you then pop this into one of your burgers and set it up on, to cook and it tells you, alerts on your phone, when to when your burgers are done. So for anybody who's concerned about maybe undercooked chicken or overcooking the roast beef, you can use these in on the stove, the barbecue, in the Varoma, um, in the oven. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm just going to launch a little video to show you how that works. Hopefully this works. Okay, can, Anne Marie, can you tell me? Can you see that? Can everybody see that? Can somebody yeah, let we, me know? We can yes. see it. Awesome. Yeah. Right. So, this is the, there's an app that you can download onto your phone or your iPad, and it steps you through the setup for the cook. So, you say what sort of meat it is, how you want it done. You pop the probe in, um, and it tells you how far you need to pop the probe in. And that then is your piece of meat ready to go. So then when you actually pop it on the barbecue or the fry pan in the oven, depending on the, the type of meat that you're cooking, it shows you the progress. So you can see currently the internal temperature is only 17 degrees. Our target, or 18 degrees, our target is 71 degrees. So you'll see those arrows eventually meet up and the outside temperature, so if your oven or fry pan, barbecue, whatever, um, is obviously heating up as well. So it's a really great safe way of cooking meat. Um, I'm not going to show you that whole video because it does take nearly five minutes for them to cook. But let me just flick across to the next video. It sends you a nice little alert when it's ready to eat. Happy eating. Now, depending on the, uh, I'm just going to stop screen sharing, depending on the type of meat that it is that you're cooking. Um, it will then also calculate the resting period as well um, if, uh, you know, before you then carve it. So I'm going to get on and cook one of those and we are going to jump across now to Jackie who is going to make our beautiful chilli crab pasta dish. Thank you, Jackie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jackie and like um, Chrissy just said, I'm going to make the chilli crab pasta. I thought this was great for our spring menu um, as it's definitely um, a much lighter pasta than your bolognese or your creamy sauces. And it's also super quick and easy to make. So we'll get started. Yes, come on. 
come down to my workbench. Um, so this recipe is on Cookie Do and it is for four people. Um, I'm just cooking it for two. So I actually don't half the recipe. We find we need to use about two thirds of the recipe um, to feed us. So I'll let you kind of know how I adjust it. So I'm just placing in olive oil. Um, I actually prefer spring onions rather than the eschalots. So we've got some um, shallots there, uh, two to three garlics. Um, we use two for the two of us. Um, some parsley, unfortunately the uh, possums just found my parsley in the garden. So we don't have any parsley today. Um, and then some chilies. So two to three chilies. I'm not the biggest chili fan. So I just put in one chili um, and then my partner just adds a little bit of chili oil at the end. So that all goes into the, uh, into the bowl and we're just going to chop that for three seconds. Um, so sometimes you might find when you're using the spring onions um, that you might need to give it just a few more seconds. So I might actually just do that step again. So I'll just go back just another three seconds. So uh, that looks much better. And the next step is just adding some white wine into it. Just sure that. Oops, a bit heavy handed there, but that's fine. It's all going to cook off. And now without the measuring cup, that's just going to cook away for two minutes. Now, while that's going, I'll just show you the parcel that we're going to be, oops, be making that will be cooking our crab mixture on the top in the Verona. So you just need some, um, is it, some paper, some baking paper. And then you're going to be adding your crab and tomato into the center of the baking paper. Um, so the crab that I use, um, you can just pick up from Coles or Woolworths. Um, because I'm halving this recipe, they are quite generous with the uh, seafood. So I do just half the amount of crab um, where everything else we're kind of doing more um, two thirds of the recipe. Um, so yeah, these you can pick up from Coles or Woolworths in 140 grams, which is half of the recipe. Um, if you are doing the full recipe, most of the um, fish shops um, sell the 280 servings. So you can either get two of those from um, Woolworths or you can um, get the other ones from the fish shop. So you're just gonna put that into the center. Um, just break it down a little bit. And then you're adding um, your cut up tomatoes. So once again here, just going to put those onto the top. A dash of salt. And then you're just waiting for your um, this is it, your, your mixture here, just to really cook through. Um, it's starting to smell delicious, all of that being cooked away. Um, also with the pasta, um, I find this recipe doesn't give um, a big enough pasta surfing for um, my partner and I. Um, so the recipe says about 200 grams of pasta. Um, we find we need to use at least 150 grams for the two of us. So our mix just ready, just take that off. Mm, and that, that is looking good. So this now, just very carefully pour it over your 
tomatoes and crab mixture, making sure it all stays in there. Scrape it out so we don't miss any. Yeah, oops, sorry, put that back on there. And now what you're gonna do is just fold it to make a little bit of a parcel, but a bit more liquid than I usually have. A little bit heavy handed with the wine. So you just fold that into a parcel. And then this is going to be going in our Varoma which we'll be cooking on top. So just going to be placing that into the Varoma. On. So we've done all of these steps. So it's in the Varoma ready to go. And now what we're adding is a litre of boiling water. So you can use the scales or just look to reach that one litre um, measuring mark in the bowl. And pop your lid on. And this is going on top. Next. So this is going to go, oops, sorry, I might just stop that, it's a little bit loud. Um, so this is gonna cook for eight minutes, cooking the crab mixture. Um, and then it will let me know um, to take the lid, I'm sorry, take the Varoma off, and then I'll measure in my pasta. Um, the crab mixture in the Varoma will go back on and we cook the angel hair pasta for three minutes, and then it's all ready to plate up. So a really quick, um, dish. Uh, what was that? Only about five minutes. So this is just going to keep cooking um, and then I'll be plating up and showing you the finished product. So yeah, I'm all done. I think it's over to Betty now for some poached chicken. Thanks, Jackie. Um, hi, I'm Betty. I've been making the um, coconut poached chicken salad. Um, it's actually a very simple, nice, light salad that you could make um, for, for a light dinner during summer, springtime. So I'm going to make a start. I'm going to start with the salad dressing. It asks for peanuts, but we don't do peanuts at home. So casual nut it is. It works just um, as well. And it's the beauty of um, being able to um, adjust the, mix, the, the recipe to what you need for your family. So I'm just going to blitz that for three seconds just to um, crunch it up. It'll be a bit loud. And it's always amazing how, how quickly and how well the TM um, crushes the nuts. There you go. And I do like a bit of crunch in my nuts, so it's perfect. Into a little bowl to save for later. Back into the cradle. Um, then I'm going to pop in some ginger. Well, it calls for two long chilies, but um, I've got kids to feed tonight, so I'm only putting in a quarter of a chili. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be too um, hot for them. I'm going to skip the lime leaves because the kids doesn't like it much. Um, we're going to chop all of that up. Oh, three, three seconds. All done. And I'm um, just going to scrape down. Just go show you that it chopped really well in three seconds. Scrape it all back down to the bottom of the bowl. Smelling so nice already. I'm gonna add in 60 gram of fish sauce. You can get fish sauce from Coles or Woolies. Um, they're really easy to find. And it gives a fantastic flavor for the dressing. And I'm going to blitz that for five seconds. 
it's a really simple, um, fragrant, nice salad dressing, which which helps us to have an appetite during the really hot days. Okay, I'm going to leave my dressing in my jug because I happen to have the luxury of a second bowl to make the pulled chicken. Because the chicken took about 23 minutes to cook, I've done it prior and I've cooked it in a broth of um, coconut milk, um, lime leaves, lemongrass, brown sugar, and some lime juice. And again, the lime juice gives the chicken a really good flavor and it also helps to protect the blade from um, rusting. So I have pre-cooked that and it's all done and I've saved 100 ml of the broth. If this is actually hot, you would not want to grab it with your hands. You would actually use your um, spatula to grab it out from your jug so it's nice and safe. So don't need a broth anymore. I'm gonna put it in and skip to the set where I um, would shred the chicken. Um, Shredding the chicken is actually um, really useful, not just for the salad. The chicken, once it's shredded, it gives it some, it makes it a really healthy, easy, ready to go chicken that you could either use in a salad, in a sandwich, or even on top of a pizza, which is um, an all time favorite for my kids. So in go the reserve chicken into the jar. Upon the lid. And the measuring cup. And I'm just going to reverse this for five seconds. Reverse speed four. And you'll see how well the chicken is actually shredded. Okay. I'll just show you the shredded chicken. Perfect size for salad, perfect for sandwich, and perfect for pizza topping. I have pre made some of my salad, and I'm just going to be putting them together. Um, and I'll show you the end product at the very end, but I will just show you the chicken coming out of my jug. It's um, really nice size for a salad. And I think it's um, back to Kirsty for your um, burger and I'll show you the end product at the very end. Thank you so much, Betty. That was fabulous. And look, I just um, would like to mention to everybody that Betty stepped up at the last minute. Um, oh. We had a needed to change um, uh, presenters and Betty put her hand up and she's also doing a class tomorrow making the egg tarts. So thank you so much, Betty, for stepping up in our time of need. Great. So look, some of us have got some dishes to finish plating up. So I'd like to go back to Janine who's going to quickly talk you through our September um, uh, offer. And we have some exciting news for you as well. So don't go away. Janine's going to talk you through that while we all plate up our dishes and then we'll do what we call the whip around. You get to see our uh, finished product. So thank you, Janine. I'll be back in a second. No worries. Thanks, Kirsty. So, Thermo Mix, always full of everyday surprises for us, aren't they? Um, so we've got the um, September bundle that, that Kirsty's already spoken about, and I think she's going to give us a little bit more detail. Uh, but we also have another offer coming along um, in a few days' time, um, and, and that is a, a free gift with purchase. And it's this beautiful Meals in a Flash cookbook, um, obviously that is on cookie do as well but you know sometimes it's really lovely just to have a book um, in a lot of these uh, thermomix books there's um, you know they have some nice little introductory things lots of tips and tricks that you actually don't get um, you know on the recipes with cookie do um, this is a fabulous little book I've marked a couple of things that are my favorite so you know, another bread product, you probably think I'm going bread mad, but we actually don't eat that much bread, but yeah, 
the Sunshine Pull Apart bread has been super popular. Um, everyone was making that last year. So, you know, coming around again for that time for entertaining. And people think you're pretty amazing when you throw a barbecue together and, you know, drop of a hat and you can whip out some beautiful um, pull aparts or a sunshine bread. And the other, my absolute favourite um, Super Bowl time, I think, is called Hug in a Mug. Um, and I think the name kind of says it all. It literally is just this beautiful, nourishing, kind of rich, beautiful soup. Um, I must admit there is one change that I add to it. I add in a the biggest, fattest leek that I can find. Um, and I just add that in at the beginning when it adds the other ingredients in there. And I just find it, I don't know, just kind of gives it that extra little kick that... Um, I really like. So meals in a flash. And you also get the kitchen toolkit, which I think is worth um, $115. Um, and it comes in this little pack like that. So, you know, fabulous for camping or, you know, you're going away. Picnics, like, hello, we're all allowed to have picnics at the moment. Um, my dad is a builder, 83-year-old builder, and I gave him one of these kitchen toolkits and he said they're the best scissors he's ever used in his life. So you can whip through a chicken or anything like that. Lots of, um, you know, great little knives, pairing knives. There's a dessert scoop there. You can also use that for avocados and, and fruit, stuff like that. So that is actually a free gift with purchase um, coming up in the next couple of days. So if you don't have a Thermomix and it's on your radar, have a chat to your consultant and she will give you the options about which one you can choose. The meter is also a really good one. That's incredible value for $49. Um, but I may as well show you my dish while I'm here and then you can head into the whip around with everybody else. So here is the um, focaccia. Oops, little bits falling off it. Um, so that just turned out really beautiful. The smell coming out of the oven was just gorgeous. Um, you know, quite pretty and, and, and a little bit festive and a little bit of fun. And we all need a little bit of um, fun and smiles on our faces at the moment. So I think we've all um, been doing it a little bit tough. But thank you from me. Um, I hope you picked up lots of tips and tricks. If you're interested in all in joining uh, this beautiful community of, of consultants getting together and um, cooking for you today, have a reach out to your consultant or let us know on the email. And uh, we'd love to have a chat with you about that and, and, and love to have you join the team. And that way you'll get the most out of your Thermomix. So, all right, thank you, Kirsten. Back to you. That looks absolutely amazing. I'm so impressed that the colours stayed after it was baked. And uh, you're, um, you've just triggered a reminder for me. Anne-Marie's just going to quickly launch a poll before we whip around to the other dishes, give everybody another minute or two. Anne-Marie, if you wouldn't mind launching that poll, we've just got three quick questions for you so that we can help um, uh, you know, meet your, your needs after the class. Um, so if you wouldn't mind quickly answering that poll and then we will come back and show you all of these beautiful dishes that uh, we've got ready to go for you. Excellent. So uh, I'm not sure, is everybody still doing the poll or can I start showing you my dish? Uh, still, we're still going, Kirsty. Just going a couple, of, a couple okay. of seconds. All right, so um, I'll just keep talking then. So Janine's let you in on the, the big secret about what our October gift with purchase is going to be. I did touch earlier on what our current September offer is. It's not a gift with purchase, it's a value bundle. So as Janine said, for $49, you get the meter, which uh, we had a brief look at, valued at $200 on its own or $199. You also get a set of the barbecue sliding skewers. So these are quite long. They're more than one person's um, worth of meat. Um, and they've got this fabulous little slidey thing. So you don't end up poking yourself in the cheek while you're trying to gnaw the meat off it. Set of four of those. And our beautiful barbecue cookbook. And as Janine said, our cookbooks always have bonus material in it that is not available on cookie do you only get the recipes on cookie do and this is chock a block full of bonus um you know tips about camping barbecuing you only camping and hosting barbecues and what sort of wood chips to use for your smoker and all sorts of cool tips like that all right so back to our dishes 
here's my beautiful pineapple cream. I made the mistake of tasting some before I popped it in the thermos or as I put it in the thermos server later and I'm dying to have this. It just is so delicious. And obviously you could serve the kids and then, um, you know, in the Thermomix add a little bit of something adult to mix in with that and everybody's happy then. So there's our um, what could turn into a nice slushy cocktail. And then I've got here my beautiful lamb burger and there's, you can see the bits of, you probably can't see it, but I can, the little bits of the burger wheat, um, the lemon zest, those herbs in there, absolutely delicious. And then of course, we've got our Harissa yogurt dressing to go on the top of that as well. Absolutely delicious, no tomato sauce on or barbecue sauce on these burgers. Can you see that? Is that a better angle there? Um, and so yummy, delicious burger. So I'm all set for my afternoon, early dinner. That and looks beautiful, Kirsty. Yeah, um, I love the, the harissa dressing. I mean, it, it just kind of takes it to the next level, doesn't it? It does. It takes the humble burger, just really fancies it up to that next level. So very impressive. I hope the family appreciate that. Otherwise, they can cook for themselves because we've got a family mix. All right. We are going now to, where are we going? Um, the chicken salad or the pasta, and then we might finish up with the sous vide strawberries. I think Betty's ready to go, so we may as well go there. Hey, Betty. Hi, so the salad's pretty much ready. Um, I've left the dressing to the very last, so it looks nice and pretty. And like Kirsty said, um, I only used the buffer last minute, and she, this is just a secret. This is the first time I've made it, and <laughs> it looks perfect. So this is the beauty of the oh, Thermal Mix. You can make things perfect just the first go. It's so amazing. The flavor's good. The color's good. The chicken's perfectly shredded. My kids have a blast. They, they're, not, they're not big salad eaters, but they will eat this. Very no! happy with this. Looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> my, my little one, the, the seven-year-old just screamed, no, no. you can go. Sorry. <laughs> The, the 11 year old will eat it. He eats salads with me. <laughs> Looks amazing. I reckon yes, you're I'm most happy. Salad. <laughs> Yum. Thank you. And uh, Jackie, have yes. you got? Have yes, you... I'm ready. Thank you. So I've got, I've oh, gone back to you, Christy. Yep, <laughs> beautiful. Um, so I've got my serving of the chili crab pasta. Um, I often just put a little squeeze of um, lemon juice over the top just to really bring out the flavours um, on my dish. And then for my partners, um, like I said, he likes the chili. He just drizzles a little bit of chili oil on the top of it. Um, delicious, yeah, crab pasta in your own house. Um, and it definitely tastes like restaurant quality. So that's what I'll be enjoying um, this evening. Yum, looks amazing. Yes. Delicious. Smells great. And presenters, don't forget to take a photo before you dive in. <laughs> <laughs> as tempting as it is. Cara, a reminder. <laughs> Lucky large. Um, I just want to correct myself though, because I um, I think I said that the temperature that the strawberries cook on is 68 degrees. I was getting mixed up. I made chicken liver pate yesterday, which was also amazing, but that was 68 degrees. The strawberries actually cook at 80 degrees. Um, so my strawberries are done. I've let them cool for a bit. Um, it does say for them to cool completely. They ha it hasn't cooled completely, um, but I find that that's not a problem as long as it's not too hot. Um, so I'm gonna spoon some of these delicious strawberries over my mousse. Let me just angle my screen down. Um, the strawberries on top. This juice is amazing. I'm obviously doing the Cointreau one first. Um, because this is mine um, and that the juice the strawberries it's all just fabulous um, my children aren't crazy about the sous vide strawberries because they say that they are too squishy um, so I do make this dessert and just put fresh strawberries on for them so you don't you don't um, you can keep the the delicious sous vide ones for the adults um, and fresh for the children if they prefer um, that looks Amazing. And Why do I person again and actually taste each other's dishes. I know. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the marbling. It looks beautiful with the biscuit at the bottom, then the white chocolate mousse, um, and then the beautiful red strawberries on top. So um, it is a very pretty dessert um, and does 
look really good. When we can entertain again and have dinner parties, this is a great one to do. Restaurant quality at home. That's right. <laughs> Here we go much everybody thank you to all the presenters for you for putting together your amazing dishes thank you to our guests for today i hope you are feeling inspired we will send out an email with all of the recipes and a few of our little um, hints and tricks and tips i will just show you one other thing before everybody goes cara mentioned that we do have a little um, vacuum seal machine in the mix shop it's great it's handheld it just fits in a drawer you just it comes with a set of bags and you can buy extras. All you do is pop your strawberries or steak, whatever, in there and then pop the end of that over the little orange dot, press the end, and it just sucks the air out. Um, they're really, really easy to use. Great for your trail mix and things if you're just camping or something as well. So have a look for that in the mix shop if you are wanting to really get into your sous vide. So hope everybody enjoyed this afternoon. If you've got questions, feel free to, um, to stay and come off mute and ask those um, if we missed something in the chat. Otherwise, you have a lovely afternoon and um, do be in touch with your consultant if there's anything that we can help you with. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, Kirsty. Can, can I just ask Betty? Question for Betty. Yes. Yes, yeah. please. I'm I'm on the I'm on the egg custard tarts tomorrow. Do we use yes. the Thermomix recipe or do we um, do you send something through? Oh um you should use a um, recipe that I wrote up on the recipe community. Um if you look up the recipe community, you will find egg tart by Betty. Um, use that recipe and make the custard liquid tonight and leave it in the fridge and we'll mm. use it tomorrow for the um, egg tart. Oh, okay. Also, uh, when you registered, it's on the email. That The link is on the email. So you can just refer to that. And there's a, there are some instructions there as well. So make sure okay. you register so you get that information. Thank you. No worries. We look forward to seeing you. Big thanks to Anne-Marie too today for um, manning our chat room and, and doing all that for us. Much appreciated. Always gives us confidence when we know we've got Anne-Marie taking care of all the tech stuff in the background. Thank you. And I must say this focaccia, the difference between this one and the other one is it has the most amazing crispy skin um, but it's so light and soft on the inside. It's just really. Oh, mm. I have never thought to use the buttermilk bread recipe to make focaccia out of. I'm going to have to try it now. No, me neither. Great tip. It, it, it really is. It, it's so soft and fluffy. It's it's absolutely good. The problem is that you can't stop eating it. That yeah, problem. that is the problem. <laughs> when we can't get to the gym at the moment too many carbs no. yeah. <laughs> and then you have to have the chicken salad and, and feel better about you know eating yeah. healthy. <laughs> make everything that i saw today it was all amazing such great dishes fabulous it was really impressive i hope everybody got photos i'm just going to quickly take a photo uh, of my, yeah, my um, better quickly get one devour it but um yeah, yeah everything looked amazing so Definitely perks have been presented. You get to try these beautiful dishes and hopefully your family appreciates that now. <laughs> my um, my sorbet is melting, but the rest of it that's still in the thermo service still looks amazing. I should, should have showed everybody that. Look at that, how frozen it is. Still mm. an hour later. Oh, it's yum. Slightly slushy just moving around in the bottom, mm. but amazing. Mm. A couple of teenagers in the other room hanging out for me to go, okay, I'm done, you can come and eat it now. <laughs> <laughs> you got any Malibu in the cupboard, Kirsty? I think we might have finished it off last weekend with our pina coladas. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, everybody. No, have we got anybody on sure. still who's got waiting to ask questions or something? Can't yeah. find the exit. <laughs> Be brave, come off mute, come and ask us some things. We don't <laughs> have to chat to you. We haven't got everybody else like on permanent mute, have we? And they can't turn it off. No? Okay. Thank you, Anne Marie. Oh, good. It's always good to know that you're there in the background with your magic fingers answering questions and letting people in the waiting out of the waiting room into the Zoom room. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that. 
I need to go. My family are watching the rugby and they keep shouting for me to come and join them. So I'd better go and watch. Let's hope the Springboks can do it this time. And who, who last was, week was very was frustrating. All We're playing Australia oh. and we lost to Australia last Sunday. So this is like the rematch that That's has, right. to, has to go our way. Otherwise, I have very miserable boys in the house. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> as much Thanks. as we will. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> See ya. That's All right. Bye. 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 Now, unless Bye. anybody else wants to Bye. say anything. Thank you, everybody. It was great. Thank Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.